And when we share that good news, that great message, people's lives are changed. And what I want you to see is when you share it, when you live it, when you act it out, and we help people hear and receive the good news, that ministry will multiply. Because when one hears it, they'll share it with two, and those two will share it with four, and those four will share it with eight, and those eight will share it with 16, and the ministry will multiply when we share this good news. Because that's how good news travels. Good news starts from one person. But once the good news gets out, it multiplies and transforms. And so here we talk about the ministry of multiplication. Here in the text, in Jesus gives a parable that highlights what ministry of multiplication means and what it means when we share and what it means when we receive the word of God and then share the word of God, how it should look. And so church, we got to make sure in 2018 that we're not just adding, but we're multiplying. Everybody say multiplying. Let's take a look at the text. Here in the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Mark is, is really a concise gospel. Uh, and with the, and the writer Mark, he, he groups things together that are connected. And so when you study it, you want to not just study one part of it, but you want to look at how the things are connected because how things are connected gives you insight onto the parts. So looking at it from the whole gives you insight on the parts. And so when you look at Mark 4, there are four parables in that, and they all are really connected. And even though we may look at them as separate, they are actually connected and we're going to see it and connected in this multiplication ministry. Well, let me give you, let me break them all down for you. The first parable, I think that's in verses 1 uh, through uh, through 8. And uh, he gives, Jesus gives a parable. He's on the boat. There's the crowd. He's teaching them and he teaches them with parables. The word said he always spoke to them in parables and he gave them parables. And, and parable was a, a unique story that may have been, he would use maybe be a common analogy, a common theme that the people could understand and then take that common theme or that picture and show them God in that picture. He would show them something they could easily relate to and then kind of show them how God does things through that picture. And he would these things are called parables. Sometimes they were understood, sometimes they weren't. What we're going to do is we're going to break it down to you today so it's clear. Now the first parable we most of us who've been in Sunday school a little bit we know about it it is the parable of the four soils Jesus says a, a farmer goes out to sow he's sowing seeds he's scattering seeds he's doing the broadcast method where you broadcast the seeds out there um if you go to Lowe's now you can get a seed broadcasting what does it do it shoots the seeds out there now if you ever done one of those it doesn't it doesn't it's not pinpoint accuracy it's just what blanketing a whole area it may get on some good soil it may get in some weeds it may get on some rocks it may get on the have, but this, it's just broadcasting the seed, and that method of scattering seeds is an ancient method that we still use today. If it works, you might as well keep on using it, amen? If it's not broke, ain't no need to fix it. And so these people understood this farmer and seed analogy, and in this text, uh, the Lord, this parable, the Lord is the farmer, and he's sowing the seeds of the word, and the word goes out there, and it hits four types of people. Now, we really only want to be one type of person in that parable, amen? There are three other types, and you don't want to be those types. The first type you want to be, that's the person where there's nothing happens at all. The word hits them. They don't. They ignore it. They don't want to receive it. They don't want to hear anything about it. They're not open to the gospel. They're not open to the message. That's all right. It's kind of good. When you're sharing your faith, and you're living for the Lord, and you're trying to tell somebody about the Lord, and they don't want to hear it, wipe your dust off. Keep on moving, baby. Amen. Because yeah, that's, that's, that's that path. They're not, they're not really trying to hear it. And that's that one group. They're not really trying to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your goal is to, to share it, to be to do what you can, but they don't want to hear it, keep it moving, keep it going. Amen. Then that second group of persons that comes in, these are the groups. See, there's some, one people don't want to hear the message at all. Then some folk hear it, but they don't have any root. And because they don't have any root, they, they hear it, they get excited for a moment. Those are folk that get excited about church. They come for about three days, and then you don't see them again. Amen. They didn't have no, no root. You don't want to be that. Amen. You don't want to be that, that shallow person that had, that, no, that, that, no. You only, you, they only like some things about the Lord. They like the blessings coming down from heaven kind of God. Amen. That's all they want to talk about. And when God ain't blessing them, they're gone. They have no root. They're shallow. And you don't want to be a shallow believer, a no root believer. Amen. Because let me tell you, explain something. Before you go up, you got to go down. 
Amen, somebody. I'm going to help you here because some of us, uh, we want God to take us up, but we're not trying to get any roots. Amen. We're not trying to get strong. You need, you know, God's going to want you to get some roots because you're going to need some strength, amen, to handle the challenges of life. And he, he said, for the second soil, there's, there's a no root group. You don't want to be in the no root group. Say that real fast. Amen. Now you go from the no root group to the no fruit group. So some don't, he don't grow at all. Some grow, but they don't have any roots, so they don't last. Then some grow with some roots, but they don't have any fruit because they get, they get choked out. The, the text says before they can able to produce anything for the kingdom of God, before they can even produce any fruit for the Lord, before they can do any good works for the Lord, they get sidetracked and distracted by things. Amen. So they've got some roots, but they don't have any fruit. And beloved, you don't, you don't want to be in the no root group, and you don't want to be in the no fruit group. Group. Amen. And let me help you here. A lot of the church is in the no fruit group. Okay, y'all don't like that. Amen. You here, but you ain't producing anything. Amen. Let me help you. Your role, your responsibility is not just to come and sit. That's some of what you need to do, but every now you need to get up and take it outside at the, the church walls and use and let people see the God in you. Let people see the goodness in you. Let people see God, Jesus in you, and share your faith. Tell someone about, about the Lord. If you're not producing any fruit, you just, you just, we, no, you can't be in the no fruit group. There's a no root group, and then there's a no fruit group. Amen. I'm giving it to you so you can easily remember it. Amen. And so he said, no, you don't want to be any of those. You want to be in the a lot of fruit group. He says, look, he goes from those who have no fruit to those who have a lot of fruit. Now, I'm going to, show you, I'm going to explain to you what the fruit means in a minute. But we're just right now, let's understand, there's a no fruit group and then there's a whole lot of fruit. He says in verse, I think around verse 8, he says, and then he said that the last group who heard the word. See, some people heard the word, but they didn't produce any fruit. They got sidetracked. Some people heard the word, but because they didn't think good things didn't go their way, they, they got out of Dodge. Some didn't want to hear the word at all, but then some hear it and receive it, accept it. That's the good soil. They don't just produce a few, a little bit of harvest. He goes 30, 60, 100 fold. That is exponential with regards to harvest. They say, hold on, okay, Pastor. All right, I get it. I don't want to be in the, the, the no growth at all. I don't want to be in the, the, the no roots at all. I don't want to be in the no fruit at all. I want to be in a lot of fruit. Well, what is fruit? What, is, what does this mean? Well, let me help you. The mission and the mandate of the church is really two things. It is to make disciples. Everybody say make disciples. So when we talk about the ministry of multiplication, the first thing is we're, the goal is we need to what? Make disciples. And not only do we make disciples, we ought to be making disciples better. 